notes during service. Praise God. How many of you go back and rewatch some of the sermons? Praise God. I was in prayer. Anybody been in my house, they know that when it comes time to uh, prepare for the word, I don't play with God. Yeah. And when I say I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to pray for you. When I say I'm in my prayer closet, I'm in my office, and I am standing before God. And so people don't understand why there's movement over some churches and then some churches there is no movement of God. You got to look at the head. Mm -hmm. And if you don't see no fruit growing and God has you there, you need to pray for your leader. Amen. Don't go talking about folks. Pray for them. When Moses' arms started to get tired, they came and lifted him up. Amen. Right? So last Sunday's title was Built to Last. All of you have been hand-chosen by God and built to last. And when you really recognize what God is doing in your lives individually and collectively and you get off the pity party let's start with that first when you get off the pity party or the um the superstar of the world you're either down here or up here you got to be somewhere in the middle and walk in humility Jesus taught that he came to be a servant not for him to be served. Some kind of way we got this thing out of whack. And we think we supposed to be served. We supposed to be catered to. Carry my bags. Prepare my meals. I'm too finicky. I'll be watching you like, oh, what you doing? Let me see what you got. Right? But people have really lost sight of being an individual and being uniquely and wonderfully created in his image and likeness. When you look at Instagram and Facebook and all these things, all the women look exactly the same. They all want to dress their faces a certain way, wear a certain kind of hair, present themselves a certain kind of way, God said, I want you to stand out. I don't want you to look like everybody else. I want somebody to look at you and see that there's something different about you. So, today we are going to come out of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, chapter 23. It is a long chapter, but I'm going to try to shorten it as best as I can. We're starting at the ninth verse, Jeremiah 23, ninth verse. Page 538 in the church Bible. So I'm going to read quite a bit. And we're going to get through this thing. Amen? So while you are finding your place in the Word, I respect the reading of the word rest into your feet and I am going to pray for the Holy Spirit to take over. Father God, I come before your throne of grace, Lord, and I ask that the Holy Spirit completely get rid of Lisa. Lord, I am no good. I am a filthy rag, a nobody. Father, this flesh is tainted, bruised, broken. Father, and I ask, Lord, that you will fill it with your Holy Spirit. That you will take over, be my eyes, my ears, my actions and reaction. Father, I pray that you will allow me to dissect this word. That we may be able to digest it. That when we walk away from here today, 
we can start applying this word to our life and produce fruit for your kingdom. Father, I pray that you will loose your warring, protective healing and ministering angels. Father, call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord. Father, put your ring of fire around this house. Every angel with a sword of flame in his hand, we block and stop every witch, warlock, dust blower, and soothsayer, and every demon that thinks that has authority. The blood of the lamb is over the doorpost. Your warring watchmen stand guard at the front door and the back door. Father, open the heavens right now. Pour out a rainbow word. Fill this place with your Shekinah glory. Father, we call on a legion of angels to sit in this house to take away the distractions, the lies, the fear, the sicknesses, the shame, the guilt. Father, we expect the unexpected. We expect supernatural miracles, signs, and wonders to take place today. Father, we expect those who are broken and lost to be found and healed and set free. Yes. Father, we speak to those on the live and we ask, Lord, that you will surrender every one of them from their flesh. Fill their homes with your Shekinah glory. Put fire all around them. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 23, uh, starting at verse 9. False prophets and empty oracles. I'm going to try to read this as quickly as possible. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine is overcome because of the Lord and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of a curse the land mourns, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their course of life is evil and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. Therefore they shall be to them like slippery ways. In the darkness they shall be driven on and fall in them. For I will bring disaster on them. The year of their punishment, says the Lord. And I have seen folly in prophets of Samaria. They prophesied by Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Also, I've seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are like Sodom to me and her inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, profaneness has gone out into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, a violent whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the later days, you will understand it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil ways. 
and from their evil, from the evil of their doings. Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying I have dreamed a dream. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor, as their father forgot my name for Baal. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chafe to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord? And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who use their tongues and says, he says. Behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Please be seated. The title of this message is History repeats itself. Are you listening? History repeats itself. Are you listening? So when we look at verses 9 through 14, I'm only going to read a little bit of it. My heart is broken. Okay? Jeremiah is telling the people, my heart within me is broken because of who? The prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. And like a man whom wine has overcome. Because of the Lord and because of his holy words. Because the land is full of adulterers. Huh? He go, go down to 11 for both prophet and priest are, are, are profane. And he says, yes, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. Huh? I've seen in 13 folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied by Baal. And cause my people Israel to err. And I also see a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. See, they commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evil doers, and no one is turning back from their wickedness. And they're all to me like Sodom and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. Jeremiah is literally giving us a glimpse into his heart. He is expressing his vulnerable heart as a true prophet of God. He's saying these lying prophets and these false men of God are causing a great confusion. They are misleading God's people. How many agree? Very much like today. Amen. Amen. We have people teaching and preaching as long as you say the name Jesus, you're good. Mm. Prayer's up. God is good all the time. But what God are you really serving? Who are you really bowing down to? Is your career, is your 
your home, your car, your, your clothing, are, are, are those your focus? Because that's an idol. That can be a God. So the church is not teaching, but God promised us that, did he not? He, he, he said, it was going to be some weird stuff going on in the last days. He reminds us in Revelation, there would be the loveless church, where nobody will show you love. The persecuted church. The compromising church. Just whatever you want to do, as long as you just keep that seat filled. Give us your tithes. We're good. You can come in here living any kind of way you want to. One week you got a girlfriend, next week you got a boyfriend. It's good. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. The corrupt church. Everybody that comes on stage is an entertainer. Just because they can sing doesn't mean they're anointed. Amen. And because they can sing, they treat them as they are special. So they abuse the gift God blessed them with. So they now turn God's house into a den of thieves and a place of entertainment. Mm -hmm. How about the dead church? Nobody's praying. Mm -hmm. Nobody's fasting. Nobody's reading the word. They just show up every Sunday. But the faithful church, they're holding on by a string. But they're faithful. They're trying. And then you got the lukewarm church. Well, some days I'm on fire for Jesus, and then some days, you know, I just fall apart and let the devil just have his way with my family instead of standing your ground. God's servant Jeremiah has a true heart for God. And what pains the Lord pains Jeremiah also. Jeremiah was best known as the weeping prophet. How many of you knew that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He served the southern kingdom of Judah. And despite warning after warning after warning, it fell to Babylon. And they were led into captivity. Jeremiah had warned the children of Israel, but they did not listen. Why won't we listen? If God is telling you something and you know that the source is a good source and uh, the prophet is a prophet, that everything that comes out of their mouth has been proven and it has been never misleading, why do we not listen? Oh no, I'd rather become in bondage. Because, yeah, I heard you, but you know what? I got my own thing going on over here. Because I think this is what God wants me to do. And then you go and you do it and you find out you just wasted time. And God said, I needed you there so you would do what I needed you to do to get ready for the enemy that was getting ready to come in and take my people captive. Jeremiah warned the children of Israel. Again, they did not do what? Listen. Listen. The warnings fell on deaf ears. And no man took heed. And they found themselves in bondage. They found themselves captives. And Jeremiah was known as a prophet to the nations. So he wasn't just no regular old, oh, just, you know, little sovereign shepherd prophetess. He was all over the place. But how many of you know that I have prophesied things and in weeks, months, a year later, you'll see a famous prophet on TV saying exactly what I've been saying. We just saw the dude on Sid Roth. Everything that man said, I said over a year ago. About the people praying 
praying to witches and uh, uh, the government praying to these deities while they're praying these officials in. Mm -hmm. He got up. He don't see it rough. And you know, everybody's like, oh my God, did you hear that? <laughs> no, you, you heard it a year ago. Was you not listening? Were you not paying attention? You know why he speaks to me? Because I stay in his counsel. I stay in his face. I shut out the entertainment. I shut out all the fun stuff. Because see, the fun stuff is fleshly stuff. Nobody took him serious. So Jeremiah is well known throughout the centuries for the famous verse, Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope so if somebody came to you and said hey God gave me a word for you and he really wants you to take heed because he got a plan for you and I need you to do X, Y, and Z. But you decide, I ain't doing that. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. We've all done it. But I'm telling you now, people of God, don't waste no more time. We don't have no time to waste. I said a couple of things about two weeks ago and within three or four days they manifested it seems like the more stuff that God has been downloading in me and as soon as I share it within a week later it's happening am I right yes I mean there's so many prophecies that God has been giving me that I can't even keep up with them I'm like everything I'm speaking out of my mouth is almost prophetic I'm not bragging because it ain't me. It's him. But he found a vessel that was willing to be depleted so he can talk through me. Amen. Amen. I personally completely understand how Jeremiah felt. And how he interpreted what God was sharing with him about his people. See, God wants to prevent a lot of your downfalls. Huh? He wants to stop you from your failures. He wants to make sure you don't end up having to go through a tragedy. But guess what? We won't listen. You know, your mama said, don't touch that, don't touch that, that's hot. Don't touch that, that's hot. How many times you have to tell a baby, don't touch the stove, but they gonna touch it anyway. <laughs> oh, that's hot, why you hit the boy? I've been telling you, every time you come in the kitchen, don't touch that stove. But you did it anyway. When are we gonna learn to learn off of somebody that already been through it? Mm -hmm. When amen. are we gonna learn that? Amen, amen. This person looked like they've been through some things. Then you verify that they have really been through what they say they've been through. And now they're willing to bless you with wisdom. Amen. And you won't take it? Because your pride is in the way? You won't take it? Because you got a controlling spirit? Jezebel, sit down. <laughs> I'm being for real. You won't listen because it wasn't your idea. Who cares? It wasn't my idea. It was his. Amen. Oh, I can't receive that from her. I don't even like her. I don't care. Some days I don't like me either. How about that? You ever thought of that? Can I be real? Yes. How many of you can sit here and say you like yourself every day? 
there's some things we do that we be like, I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> Why did I do that? Right? But for God to be willing to use you, he said, I'm raising up a remnant. There are people in this room that are living miracles. There are people in this room that you have no idea. If they sat down and we did an interview about their testimony, it would blow your wig off. You don't know who you're sitting next to. Amen. You don't know what their story is. You heard what the song said earlier. Uh, 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 she said, what did she say? She gives them a radical, no, it wasn't radical, a reckless praise and worship. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because that lady must have been through something. Come on. Mm -hmm. So she's reckless with how she worships God. Mm -hmm. I don't care about you watching me cry. You don't know what I've been through. Yes, Lord. Just as I just like this, God said, you me for ashes. Yes. You have no idea what I done came out of. Like the three Hebrew boys went in the fire and came out not even smelling like smoke. Amen. Glory. So you don't know what. So you can look, oh, she just had this perfect little poly perfect life. <laughs> no, I've been in a situation where I slept on a bus with a newborn baby. I've been in a situation where I had to run for my life from a house being shot up. I've been in situations that you couldn't even fathom. I done had a gun put to my head five different occasions. Talking about they gonna blow my head off and I told them go right ahead because I ain't got nothing to live for anyway. But looking at me, would you think that? Oh no. She looks a little shady. You don't know who you sitting next to. And this is why the devil don't want you to give your testimony. Amen. Oh, you better not tell nobody what you've been doing. You better not. There was a young man that was a, a heroin addict. And he put a picture when he was on drugs. And then he put a picture of what he looks like now serving the Lord. And he looked like two different people. Mm -hmm. So completely different people. See, when God pulls you out of something radical, you will be radical for Him. Amen. Hallelujah. You will be radical for Him. Amen. And I know what Jeremiah felt. I know what he was doing in my life. He was trying to come, uh, prevent me from downfalls and failures and tragedy. But I tell you one thing: I was listening. I wasn't going to be the one to time and time again, history repeating itself. One time was enough for me. Amen. Is anybody listening? See, at the time Jeremiah walked the earth, it was the 10th century BC. And there was a split in the kingdoms. King Solomon had a son, Rehoboam. And they could not get along. And so, instead of it being one kingdom, Rehoboam broke off from his father and went and started his own kingdom. You got too many people that will not serve under their leader. Yes, Lord. So they think they can go off and do it on their own. And God says, you're missing your blessing. Because I was going to train you up, give you favor, and then send you out with a covering. But you want to go on and do it your way, go for it. Have your way. Rehoboam had a father who was the richest and wisest man on the planet and thought he could do it better than his dad. So he broke away from his father. And when he broke away, he ended up causing schism and division. And now there are two kings. And see, the kings were 
given prophets. Yes, they were. There has never been a man with power that has not had a prophet in the history of this world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Never. Even though these kings had their own prophets, they did not listen to them. Again, not listening. And despite the prophets warning over and over and over and over, the southern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians. And then the northern kingdom, for a little spell was now under King Hezekiah who we read about in tithes this morning coincidentally and avoided being sieged. They had a temporary reprieve until the next king came into play Manasseh his son and his son was so wicked and he did what was right in his own sight Instead of taking counsel from the Lord or his prophets. How can you be so smart but so dumb? You got somebody that God has given you at your disposal that has wisdom, that has straight access to God, but you still want to do it the way you want to do it. History will no doubt it lead repeat itself and it would continue to repeat itself with southern and northern kingdoms until they repented and they would repent for a little bit things would get back right but eventually they would go back to their wicked ways and finally unfortunately the southern kingdom of judah fell. And Babylon came in and it destroyed the temple. It destroyed God's temple. And the walls of the city that were the protection. See, if you don't understand how God has a protective wall around you, and you don't protect your walls, and those walls get damaged, you're open target. Yeah. The walls of the city were literally destroyed. So they got to the temple and they tore the walls down. And Jeremiah had prophesied over and over and over, get ready, get your, get your life right, repent, surrender to God. He, you don't have to go through this. He's going to protect you. No. They wanted to do it the way they wanted to do it. 18 years, Jeremiah prophesies. He served the span of five kings of Judah. The first king was Josiah in 640 to 609 BC. Jehoaz, 609 BC. Jehoiakim, 609 to 598 BC. Jehoiachin, 598 through 597 BC and finally Zedekiah 597 to 586 BC that was the last king of Judah that served a total of 11 years the prophets that came that were speaking to the people even though they knew Jeremiah was a real prophet, I'm going to get a word online. You want to do my cards? I'm going to get a word over here. They seeking, they hopping, they church hopping. I'm going to go to this conference. I'm going to go to that conference. I want to get this. I want to I get a word from that pastor. And I want to get a word from this prophet. And I'm, that's a spirit of confusion. Oh, Jesus. It's a spirit of confusion. You sitting under a prophet, where, where are you going? 
If God ain't speaking to you, that means you ain't doing what he told you to do. Because trust and believe, you get one word from a prophet, that's all you need. Just think how rotten we are. God, I need a word. It's been three weeks and you haven't said not one thing to me. I need a word. And God's looking at you like, I told you to do something and you ain't even did it yet. Why do you need another word? You couldn't handle the first word I gave you. So, you don't like the word I gave you, so you decide, I'm going to go over to this church and I'm going to stand up there. So you're going to get blessed, you're going to get a house, you're going to get a car, you're going to get that husband. Oh, let me pay this person. Am I lying? No, nope. tell the truth. You know what was funny? Every place I would go where there was a prophet and I would go up for prayer, not one time would they pray over me. And I would be so, mind you, I'm talking when I was a, still a babe in Christ. I would be so angry when I would get home. God, why are you always telling everybody else something? Why you don't ever talk to me? <laughs> oh, my God. Because they can't. And he said, because I talk to you directly. Mm -hmm. Huh? Wait a minute, what you say? <laughs> Daughter, you talk to me every day. Why do you need a man to talk to you? I mean, everywhere I would go, I had one prophet speaking to my life, and she told me, woman of God, keep standing. I didn't know I was, I knew I had gifts, but I didn't understand them. And she told me, God is going to use you. You're going to lay hands and heal the sick. You will cast demons in his name. And you will lay hands and they will recover. You will speak in tongues. And you will minister to the nations. Huh? Half the stuff she was telling me, I didn't even understand what she was telling me. She said, whatever you do, don't Movie. She was the only person, as a matter of fact, I still got the thing in my Bible that spoke into my life, and not from that day, not another person has ever spoke to me. Ever. When I say never, ever, ever spoke to me. And it used to bother me. Like, how come they get a word? Why you ain't talking to me? I want you to say something because you don't need it. I got some new bookmarks in here, y'all. Let me see if I can find it. This was September 26, 2009. Now, mind you, y'all already got your gifts. They're just in hibernation. Huh? They're in hibernation. The prophets were prophesying <coughs> by an evil deity. Baal. A demon god. Not just any demon god. I need to give you a little bit of history about this guy. He is ranked as the first <coughs> principal king in hell. He is high ranking ruler over the east. Okay, hold it. Pump your brakes. Y'all got your seatbelts on? Listen. Hence, the east coast, the Middle East, Europe, Asia, Africa. Right now in India, has anybody ever heard of the Baal Adahar? Identification program? Anybody? No. It's called Baal Adahar. 
So in India, an Indian parent, upon having a newborn baby, when they get discharged from the hospital, you know, you get your little discharge papers to go home with you and your new little bundle of joy, right? They take the discharge paper and they can go and apply for a bail, B-A-A-L, I'm going to spell it for y'all, A-A-D-H-A-A-R card. before they even receive the child's birth certificate. What is the bail out of heart? Card. It is a high tech card that is assigned you a 12 unique digit number for ID purposes. It has your biometric information, your demographic information, it knows your iris, it knows your blood type, it knows everything about you. You know, you sci-fi movies and you stick your eyeball in or your fingerprint. Let me tell you, it is the world's largest biometric ID system. The world's largest. The World Bank Chief Economist, whose name happens to be Paul Romer, calls it the most sophisticated ID program in the world. Beloved, we have fallen so far away from God Almighty. History is repeating itself over and over and over and over. 16 says, thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesied to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall become, uh, come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? These men prophesy without counsel of God. In other words, they just pray for five minutes and I got a word. I'm being led. Something popped in my spirit. It's got to be from God. How you know it ain't from the devil? That's why the Bible says, let two judge the prophet. Anybody prophesying in secret? That's a, that's a red flag. You do not prophesy and pray in secret. They're led by their own desires and lusts of greed and power. They're thirsty. Jeremiah warns, stop listening to these type of people. They're going to make you worthless. Peace shall never be. It will never be upon this wicked nation. Only God gives peace, and it is a peace of the world. Oh, excuse me, it's not a peace of the world, but peace in God himself. Beloved, a whirlwind of the Lord's fury is about to come upon us. And it will fall on the wicked. Huh? It, 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 it will fall on the wicked. 20, 22 says if they had stood in my council, but if they stood in my council, okay, and that caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. <coughs> and then he goes on to say, am I a God not near at hand? In other words, am I not reachable? When you pray, do you not have some kind of contact with me? 
Am I a God afar off? Can, can anybody hide from me in a secret place and I'm not going to know where they're at? Absolutely not. Do, did I not feel heaven and earth? Huh? Amen. Later days, you will understand it, he says. Huh? Later days. Let me tell you something. You don't want to wait for later days. You do not want to wait for later days. Okay? God did not send these prophets. <laughs> there are too many that are standing behind pulpits as motivational speakers. They don't teach repentance. They don't teach forgiveness. But they're only teaching God's grace, His mercy, and His prosperity. What happened to decreasing the flesh and increasing in Him? Amen. Amen. What happened to the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of your sins. What happened? What happened to you taking your sins, your cares, your hurts, your pains, and your fears to the cross? Jeremiah warns over and over and over and over and over and over. But are they listening? No. No, no, and no. God says, am I too far away for you? Can you hide from me? Do I not see you? Huh? Why do you allow history to repeat itself? These people prophesy lies in my name. And they are trying to make my people forget my name. How many of you see this happening? Mm -hmm. Right now. Right now, that's right. Right now. Can I share something that was on CBN or CNN, whatever it's called? They said there was, there, I'm, I'm going to say his name, the Mr. Pillow guy is a complete enemy to democracy. Anybody know who Mr. Pillow guy knows that he is a Christian? Yes, he And is. he is a complete threat. This is what they're saying on TV. He, what, this is their words. What he stands for is a complete threat to our democracy. So Christianity is a complete threat to democracy. Then he went on to say, and they, they're causing a conflict in the faith of science and medicine. Mm -hmm. So you got faith in science and medicine, but what about God? What about God? Y'all better wake up. They ain't mention nothing about that. You watch the television news and it is repeating itself over and over and over and over. All day long, you turn on CNN, all they talking about is the Pope. Here. The Pope, the Pope, the Pope, the Pope. So the vaccinated, let me get the story straight. I got, I got, I got a whole bunch of people that's just regular folks. All of a sudden, they tell everybody, okay, we had this wave of COVID, y'all better go out and get the poke. So the people that go get the poke, they let everybody come out, and now the poke, pokey people are now infecting the unpokey people, but then they're telling the, the, the unpokey people that you're a danger to us. That's right. You're right. a danger to well, the unpokey exactly people. Right. Well, the pokey people are what started the poke. Don't tell the parents. Right. What? Because it's my choice. 
Right. But you telling me I can't have a choice over this poke? Mm. They did a study with the mice. We was talking about that the other day. And this man, I don't know exactly what his position is, but he said the mice equivalent life is two months is like two years to a human. The mice and the monkeys that took this poke, they were dead within two months. It's an equivalent to us taking it in two years from now, folks, is gonna be dropping dead. Yeah, I'm gonna have a side effects, adverse side effects, long-term side effects. They said, oh, they said that most vaccines are not supposed to pass through your blood-brain barrier. However, this one is. It's going to start giving everybody MS. They want to see how many times they can vaccinate you yeah. and get these lipids into yeah. your body before yeah. basically you yeah. deteriorate. Yeah. And it's going to continue to keep fighting it, which creates inflammation. Yep. So eventually you're going to have so much inflammation, you can't function because you're yeah. just going to be in so much pain. So here's the That's other right. thing. They are patenting. There was a there was a Supreme Court proposition. We want to patent DNA. Look it up. I believe it was in 2019. Mm -hmm. And they said you can't patent what God created. Sure can. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we're gonna go around the mulberry bush. I'm figure out a way. Clone. Ha ha. Cloning. I can make something that can go into the body and then it can start changing the natural DNA and I can give a number and then I can patent that number and then I own you. I own you. If I tell y'all, how many of y'all remember I, the Holy Spirit had given me a, 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 a vision of the exchanging of the briefcases yep. before 5G came out. Mm -hmm. How many of you remember that I saw the vial and that they exchanged it and God, Jesus was standing right here and he went just like this, like, daughter, look and see what's happening. And I realized there was a technology getting ready to come out that was associated with this vial that is intended to control us. Mm -hmm. Half the stuff God showed me that was coming, when he showed it to me, I said, I'm not telling you people that, Lord. They don't really think I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. Uh-uh. No, no way, Jose. I ain't doing it. Go get you another prophet, because I ain't the one. He told me to tell y'all that the government was going to acknowledge that aliens were real. Yeah. And how many days after I said it? I don't think it was 13 three days. days or yeah. something like that. It was on TV. It came out that the A, the, 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 the CIA or somebody, they, they were acknowledging because the Lord told me that there were these demonic portals that were opening up because we are saging, because we are conjuring up, because we are doing things. We have no idea what we are doing. Chanting the names, say the name, say the name, say the name. You're chanting names of deceased, murdered, homicide people and don't got a clue what you are doing. You're channeling the spirit of murder. Yes, exactly. God said... He is not pleased with these false men of God who only want to advance themselves and not God's kingdom. See, saints, God has been speaking directly to all of you. He has sent you a real prophet. You have been given stuff that half the world don't even know. Me and Deshanique was talking about this yesterday. Some of the stuff that I've shared with her, she shares its and bits, and then all of a sudden when it comes to past, people are looking at her like, whoa. Am I lying? Like it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. What do you mean aliens are going to be like normal? What do you mean the demons are going to start walking around in plain sight and we're going to see them and, and, and all of a sudden it's just going to be everywhere? How quick did that happen? I told you God woke me up and 
and said, ancient demons of old are getting ready to start exposing themselves. And they're going to try to in, uh, 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 intermingle with humans like they're normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil is a lie. His word is like a fire, y'all. Destroying everything against him. I'm almost done. It's a hammer. Breaking. Rock into pieces. The time is now to destroy the lies. And the time is now to take a serious look at what is going on and how we're moving into the next season. See, I need you to hear me and hear me well. Captivity is on its way. Yes. And if the remnant won't stand up, and stand on the word of God, we will find ourselves like the folks who ended up in captivity in the time of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. and Jeremiah warned them over and over. But I'm going to ask you, are you listening? See, there is an agenda, and it is moving at lightning speed. That's right. It is headed straight for you. No one will be exempt. Will you buck or will you stand for Christ Jesus? Are you listening? The enemy has corrupted the government. The enemy has got into the World Health Organization, yes. the CDC, every branch of the judicial systems, the government systems in the United States have bowed down to Baal. Mm -hmm. They pray to the goddesses of witches. They engage in the dark arts. They practice the occults. And they participate in vile acts against humanity. They are all for power and wealth. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Little boys and little girls have gone missing and no one knows where they are? Are you listening? Parents have almost lost control of their children's rights. Are you listening? A 12 year old can get pregnant, have an abortion, go through a school nurse, and you will never know anything about it. Are you listening? The Pope is being demanded. Bribes are even being given. Propaganda is shoved down the throats of millions of viewers daily. Are you listening? Your freedoms are being eliminated more and more and more. Are you listening? The foods we are being eating, eat, or, or eating are being altered. They don't have seeds. Right. Are you listening? They're genetically modified. That's right. Everything God created had a seed in it. Yes, yes. And they're destroying everything with seed in it, including women and children. Yeah, that's deep. Molech was the, the, the demon god that they put their children and placed them in their arms and burnt them alive. Abortion is modern day Molech. The intent is to control the masses. The testing was done with the lockdown. Are you listening? Turning pro-vaxxers against the unvaxxed. And they're starting a split of hatred. Mm -hmm. How many of you have gotten into a, a, a debate or an argument? Because you won't do it or you did do it. That's a personal choice. But because of the propaganda on the, on the media, shoving it down your throat, you're an enemy. There's going to be civil unrest. How many remember I said you better get your house in order? How many of you remember I said you better store up? How many of you remember I told you? I told y'all to put food up months before the, the shutdown. Years. Months. I said start stacking up. God said something is coming and we ain't going to be able to go get no food. Everybody's like, did you get your order? Nope. Did you get this? Nope. Did you? Oh my God, I can't get no water. You had a 
two year warrant, three year, how many years? 2016 year. Yeah. Three year warning. A three year warning God gave us. It's time to wake up. It's time to listen. And it's time to truly acknowledge God's true prophet. Prophets. And you need to stand up and not grow weary. It ain't a time to go out trying to adventure and do this. It's time to stay where you are at so you can be prepared for what to do. The enemy strategy, cut the head, the body falls. Why do you think he hates marriage? Why do you think he comes against husbands? Why do you think he's coming against men? So many men in the last four or five years have come out as homosexual. Yes. Wait, wait, y'all all been in the closet? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Damn! Thank you. Somebody else said it. Uh, in the food in prison to keep men from being around. And women. So what do you think they're doing to us? And they have been trying to decrease population. Do not let history repeat itself. Are you listening? Give God some praise. Amen. Yeah, that was just a good message. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm gonna pray for those on live. And I, I feel like uh, being messy. <laughs> when is our when is our last day for praying for us? Or for not praying for us? <laughs> For those that ask for yourself, can I pray for you tomorrow? <laughs> Father God, I want to come before your throne of grace, Lord, and I want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being always and all time, God, Lord. Father, you are so awesome that you chose this little place to allow your name to reside in. That your word flows. That you have raised up a remnant. Father, I pray for our beloved sisters on live and our brothers. And I ask, Lord, that you would touch Jackie. Father, you know the situation. Father, the spirit of confusion, double-mindedness. Father, break it in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you would just have your way over every area and arena of her life. Father, I lift up Liz, and I ask, Lord, that you will touch her health, touch her marriage, touch her children, grandchildren. Father, that you will shift right now. Anything and everything that's not from you, for you, or of you. For, for, for the season is now, Lord. Father, I call on a legion of angels to visit these women, and I pray right now for our beloved sister Paulette, who's standing in the gap for the entire nation. Lord, continue to help us be on the watchtower so we know the things to pray. Father, we lift up Gina and we ask that you will visit her as well, Lord. Surround her. Remind her that she has a call and that through you she can do all things. Father, I pray right now for a spirit of peace to just saturate and take over that house. Touch each one of them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Yes. If there is anybody in their homes that are listening that is unsaved, Lord, let there be a tugging at their heart that they want to really truly surrender to you, Jesus. Yes. Father, I bless you and I honor you and I thank you, Lord. If there is one that doesn't have a church home on live, Lord, let them know Sovereign Shepherd is a place where we welcome you. Father, we give you the glory and honor, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Who would like prayer? Amen. Amen. Okay, I got five. So we're going to do it.
I got five, and that's all we do, okay, guys? So, um, and if you guys are able.